there, welcome back to Amazing Psychology. Today we're going to discuss what the meaning of early childhood is, what are the characteristics of early childhood and what are the different hazards in early childhood. So let's get started with what the meaning of early childhood is or what is the period of early childhood. Usually it's the time between the time of birth and eight years of age. This is the specification that's been given by UNESCO and UNESCO says that this is a time or a period where remarkable growth in brain occurs within the child. This has also been called the play age or a time in which children engage in a lot of play time and the education that occurs at this particular age is called childhood education. Now childhood education is very important at this stage and something that's also important at this stage is parental involvement in the child's life. So the parents are the ones who are the most important in the child's life at that stage and they are the ones who take a lot of decisions that lay the foundation of a child's growth in future. For example, if a parent just places the child in child care, then the kind of exposure that the child gets there is limited to play activities. But if the parent enrolls the child into kindergarten, then the child acquires the basics of language. They acquire maybe um, the ability to count to 10 or 20 and the foundation for further learning in school occurs over there. So a child who has been placed in kindergarten has a greater advantage over a child who's just gone to a care center. So this is how uh, parental decisions actually affect the growth and development of a child during early childhood. Now, let's move on to the characteristics of early childhood. The first is that early childhood involves a high rate of behavioral problems in children, which can um, involve obstinacy, uh, being adamant, being stubborn, being disobedient, being negative. All these kind of characteristics or behavioral problems are seen prominently during the early childhood phase. A second thing that's notable is that children usually spend a lot of time playing with toys and they also spend a lot of time playing games. A whole lot of learning in their life occurs through the games that they play. The third thing that should be noted is that um, during the stage, a child achieves a lot of physical and mental independence. This is also because the child starts going to school at that particular age. The fourth point in the characteristics of early childhood is that children become more self-sufficient and they also develop self-esteem. The fifth point is that the foundations of social behavior are laid at this particular stage. That is, children learn how to engage in organized social interactions, especially when they're entering into kindergarten and school, how to uh, behave in an organized setting, following the rules in a particular establishment or organization, all of that happens at that particular age. So on the whole, a child's physical, cognitive, emotional and social development occurs during the early childhood. The characteristics were about four or five. I hope you remember all of them. Let's move on to the next phase, which is the hazards that occur in early childhood. Now the hazards can be split into two types. One is the physical hazard and the second is the psychological hazard. There are different kinds of physical hazards that occur in early childhood. Let's just look at those. The first is illness. If a child is highly susceptible to illness or has had repeated viral attacks or has respiratory problems, there's a chance that the child will have um, a lot of gaps in their playtime or the time that they spend with other people. Because of these prolonged disturbances or prolonged periods of time where they are not able to engage or interact with children of their age, they usually fall back in the kind of socializing and the uh, play activities that they're supposed to gain during that particular age. The second factor that is a hazard, a physical hazard in early childhood is accidents. Now, accidents are one of the primary reasons for death at that particular age span. And it is seen that boys are mostly affected by accidents more than girls. Accidents can occur because of um, knife cuts. It can also occur because of burns. It can happen because children fall down and broken bones. Um, they have broken bones. It can happen because they rush onto the street and they get hit by a car. 
it can also happen because they accidentally fall into the swimming pool so there are many hazards uh, which can actually cause sometimes temporary and sometimes permanent damage to a child then a third hazard or a third risk that occurs during early childhood is obesity obesity is a condition where children overeat or they have a natural tendency in their body to gain weight children with endomorphic build types have greater tendencies to struggle with their weight than children who have mesomorphic body types and children who love having junk food and uh, spend a lot of time overeating have a greater tendency to develop diabetes and also heart attacks when they become adults now let's move on to the psychological hazards in early childhood now the first one in that is speech hazards children usually have to learn how to communicate to be able to involve in social situations and to be able to belong in a social setting now if a child has not acquired the language at the level that is required to be acquired at that particular age they will usually be rejected by their friends and uh, their communication may not be clear uh, they might have slurred speech or stammering or stuttering or problems like that all of these cause them to be rejected by their peers due to which the socializing skills that they have to develop at that particular age is lost children also end up having feelings of inadequacy and inferiority because of these speech hazards the second problem that they face is social hazards now as I told you children with communication problems are definitely going to be unpopular among their peers unless of course the peers have been taught to be accommodative of people who have problems so um, again communication problems are a big hazard in social settings the second is that uh, because of this isolation that occurs children might end up feeling lonely they may not get the opportunity to develop peer approved behavior like other children are getting they may also um, face a hazard a social hazard which is discrimination because of their gender or their race or their religion in such cases where children experience these kind of discriminations they say they, they tend to manifest biased behavior an example would be a young black boy growing up in America um, let's say that he's growing up in a very um, underdeveloped part of the town and um, there's a lot of crime rate going on he grows up seeing a lot of people getting arrested by the police such a child will develop a biased thinking that he comes he's a, he's being persecuted and he might carry that feeling of persecution or that feeling of rage towards everybody else from the time of childhood so biased behaviors are very very dangerous and if they are not addressed early on they become a permanent part of a person's personality so again just going over the social hazards the first is if language is not acquired properly um, the rejection occurs among peers the second is that um, if playtime and interactions does not occur properly then a child ends up feeling isolated or not growing well in a social setting the third is that if a child experiences some kind of discrimination when they are young that is during early childhood in terms of being uh, a male or a female or in terms of being a transgender or in terms of being um, from a different caste or a different religion or a different race altogether all of these form a bias in the child which prevents them from developing completely and uh, into a wholesome character when they become adults so the next hazard that we are going to discuss is play hazards we know that there are limitations to how much of playtime you can get or access to play activities you can get depending on where you stay so if because of geographical limitations a child is not able to engage in play activities like the rest of their peers are then that loss will um, reduce the development of motor skills that are needed at their age it will also reduce their ability to interact with other peers and learn how to work in a team also it can result in children feeling inferior and not feeling um, not uh, feeling confident about themselves or having uh, proper growth of self-esteem within them the fourth and final hazard that occurs the fourth and final psychological hazard that occurs in early childhood is moral hazards in moral hazards 
we know that children have to be disciplined, right? And if we're talking about a nuclear family, most of the disciplining occurs from the father and the mother. But in joint families or families where there are many people involved who are elder to the child and who all have discipline the child, the child tends to get confused. In such situations, because the child doesn't know whose direction to, com to follow, um, they end up having um, a reduced capacity to conform to social expectations in different places. Another situation is when um, you have grandparents in the home and uh, the only grandchild um, in the family is pampered heavily and when the parents try to um, discipline the child the grandparents get involved and say you can't discipline the child so the child learns to play the parents against the grandparents and the pa grandparents against the parents in such situations too children don't learn how to conform to social expectations in different settings so that again is a hazard um, as the child grows up because they don't acquire the ability to function properly and um, in an expected manner in other different social settings. So altogether now we have discussed what the meaning of early childhood is, what are the different characteristics of early childhood and the different physical and psychological hazards that occur during early childhood. I hope you understood this entire thing clearly. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video.